Everybody said, yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the workers' meeting tonight. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people always coming, always learning, always laboring for you. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your work will prosper in every hand in Jesus' name. Yeah. For the children, for the youths, for the campus, with our mothers, our sisters, our women, with our pastors, with our leaders. We pray, Lord, you bring everyone success in Jesus' name. Amen. We will not regret that we are serving you. Amen. And you give everyone satisfaction in life. Amen. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you can see now. We're coming to John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verses 13 and 14. John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You'll find uh, the use of that word drink in verse 13 and also you'll find it in verse 14. Verse 13, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. And then in verse 14, it says, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. And the problem the woman had was that she didn't understand the language of Jesus Christ. How do we know she didn't understand? Because she said, Give me this water to drink so that I will not come here to draw water again. But Jesus overlooked that misunderstanding because he knew where he was going. And Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, used that word, drink. Number one, in a figurative way. Number two, in a spiritual way. Number three, in a scriptural way. And this was not the only time that Jesus used the word, drink. As you look at John chapter 6, you'll see that he used that word again, drink, and he anchored that word, drinking, with eternal life. That you drink this, and then you have life eternal. The people too did not understand, just like the woman did not understand. Come to John chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 33 to verse 35. It says, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then it says, Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. They were thinking of something physical, something natural. They didn't understand. He was talking, number one, figuratively, number two, spiritually. Number three, scripturally. Look at verse 35. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh, he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. You'll see there, he used two words. Number one, he cometh to me. Number two, he believeth in me. Now he's going to summarize that. And he's going to put those two words together. He comes to me to meet a need in his life. He comes to me that religion cannot meet so that I will meet that need. He comes to me, and when he comes to me, he believes in me. And because of that believing in me, he will then have life. He will not thirst again, and in hunger, his hunger will be satisfied. 
come to verse 53 then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you except look at this ye, drink, ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you you see jesus christ had already used the simple words for them come believe then he put those two words together now and he said except you do that except you come to me except you believe but he used the other words except you eat and except you drink of my blood it just means that you believe that is my blood that gives you this life eternal except that you cannot have life but 60 many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said this is an hard saying who can hear it this is an hard saying they were not listening to everything come to me that's not hard and then believe on me that's not hard but bringing those two words together you come to me you want to have life all right you'll drink the blood of the son of man that's an hard saying we don't understand that bring it down to the normal thing that he had said whosoever comes unto me i will in no wise cast out that's what he's saying whosoever believeth in him will never perish that's what he's saying but because he used the word drink that was the problem and now they went back look at verse 66 from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him that word drink as you look at the word drink you'll find it wasn't something new at all the Bible had used that word over and over. And if these uh, Jewish people had read their Old Testament, they would have understood the word drink. That it's not just uh, drinking water alone or drinking, you know, in the physical, in the natural. And let's go to the Old Testament now. We're looking at Job chapter 15. In Job chapter 15, reading here from verse 16. Job chapter 15 verse 16 How much more abominable and filthy is man which drinketh iniquity like water. You see that? That's the word. Drinketh iniquity like water. What does that mean? It's a doer of iniquity. He practices iniquity. He believes in iniquity and he gives his life, he gives his heart, he gives everything he has to iniquity. Turn it around. You come to me and you drink. You drink, that is you believe in me. You accept me and you take me in to yourself. And when I come to you, I'm going to change your life. You drank iniquity, stop drinking iniquity, and now come and drink from the gospel I offer. Look at chapter 21. Job chapter 21, reading from verse 20. It says in chapter 1, chapter 21, verse 20, His eyes shall see his destruction. It's talking about the sinner who dies in sin. He shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Drink. That's the word again. What does it mean? It means he will undergo the wrath of the Almighty. He will experience the wrath of the Almighty. Come on now to the New Testament. You drink from me. You will experience me. You will experience the life I've given. And you will experience the righteousness that I have brought. We are coming to Psalm 75. Psalm 75. And we are looking at verse 8. Psalm 75. Verse 8. For in the hand of the Lord... Is there is a cup and the wine is red and it is full of mixture and he pours out the same but the dregs thereof all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them 
that's the word drink again it's talking about the judgment of god it's saying that those who live in sin those who die in sin you know what's going to happen to them at the end of life they're going to drink of the wrath of god what does that mean they're going to partake of the judgment and they're going to have the experience of the suffering of the wrath of god so the word drink was not something totally new to the jews if they had read their old testament we're coming to proverbs chapter chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 16 proverbs chapter 4 verse 16 it says in proverbs 4 16 going on to 17 for they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall look at verse 17 for they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of tell me violence just means that they are bad people they are wicked people they are sinful people they practice violence that's what it means they drink the what the cup of violence and so if uh, these people of the new testament in john chapter 6 and if the woman the woman appears to be religious because the woman said our fathers worshipped on this and this side and jacob worshipped here and you jews say we should worship in the other place she appeared religious not only that you appear to be a prophet she could identify a prophet and then she said all right now we know that the messiah is coming she was religious and in being religious she should have understood the use of the language drink but she didn't understand and there are many people today who are going to church or they go to some assemblies and yet some simple words of the scripture they don't understand and because they don't understand they miss out on the blessing of god oh, i praise god for you that you will not miss out of the blessing of god look at proverbs chapter 26 proverbs chapter 26 and i'm reading from verse 6 he that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and what happens drinketh damage what's that it's just saying that the person who sends uh, a fool on an errand is going to be disappointed is going to experience disappointment is going to suffer disappointment disappointment will enter into him and he'll be so sorrowful because of that disappointment is going to drink damage and so when you understand the words that jesus used he that drinketh of this water he takes this water in the physical one the natural one he'll thirst again but he who comes to me and then he takes something that i have the gospel that i have the good news that i have he takes the message of salvation that i have and then he relies on me he believes in me he experiences my life eternal he will never thirst again what does that mean he will not thirst for the things of the world again he will not run after the old life that he had, she had been living before but now that uh, water that i give him is a water of life it will spring forth in him a well of water springing up to life everlasting that's what you have got you'll keep it in jesus name Look at Isaiah chapter 51, reading from verse 22. The point I'm making is, if we will read our Bibles, and we will read everything the Lord has provided, we don't need to misunderstand the language of the New Testament. We don't need to misunderstand what Jesus Christ is saying, and we don't need to go away and say that's a hard saying, who can receive it. Thank God you have received it look at chapter 51 of isaiah i'm reading from verse 22 isaiah chapter 51 verse 22 thus says the lord the lord and the god that pleadeth thy cause the cause of his people behold i have taken out thine hand from thine hand the cup of trembling and even the dregs of the cup of my fury 
thou shalt no more drink it again he's saying the fury will not come to you anger of heaven will not come upon your life he says you will not drink it again what does that mean you will not go through that suffering again you will not have the sorrow and the suffering again again he used the word drink now come to revelation chapter 14 revelation chapter 14 and we're reading from verse 9 revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 9 and the third angel that followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead and all innocent look at this the same shall what's the word drink of the wine of the wrath of god drink of the wine of the wrath of god it's not talking about beer it's not talking about uh, you know any brand of alcohol it's talking about judgment the final judgment he will go through he will experience he will suffer that judgment and then it says uh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lord in verse 11 and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who who worship the uh, beast and his image whosoever and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name now we understand the word drink it means you believe it means you experience it means you partake of it means you have into you the life of christ let's come back to john chapter 4 tonight we're looking at the message drinking to satisfaction from the savior's well drinking to satisfaction from the Savior's well. It will satisfy you, in your heart, in your soul, in your family, in your business, in your spiritual work, in your spiritual life. Satisfaction will come to you. Drinking to satisfaction from the Savior's well. Let's come back to John chapter 4. Reading from verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. And the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into life everlasting everlasting life that's yours how do we say or how did we know that will bring satisfaction psalm 36 in psalm 36 reading from verse 8 psalm 36 verse 8 it says they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house look at this and thou shalt make them what's the next word there drink of the river of thy pleasures that's what jesus is referring to the pleasure of the lord the goodness of the lord the joy of the lord the provision of the lord all the spiritual provision that christ brought that is going to culminate and the climax will be at the cross of calvary it says come in woman and come in man come in come out of your sin and come to the savior and then it says he'll make you to drink of the river of his pleasure and then it says they will be abundantly satisfied we're going to make it personal i will be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of his house you can be satisfied you will be satisfied look at verse 9 for with thee is the fountain of life you see that that's what jesus was talking about with thee is the fountain of life in thy light we shall see light i will see light 
when all darkness is gone away from your life and when all the confusion at the crossroad when everything is gone away and then you see christ in front of you anytime confusion is gone restlessness is gone worry and anxiety everything is gone and then you are following the lord and every step of the way abundant life for you but stand, O oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. The Lord is talking about giving us uh, something uh, that will give us total satisfaction. He offers the true satisfaction, abiding satisfaction. But you understand, we cannot drink from two cups at the same time. If you're going to drink this cup, you have to put that other cup down. If you're keeping to this other cup and you are drinking, you know, then you have to forsake this other one. We cannot drink the death dealing water and the life giving water all at the same time. We must stop the drink that brings death and damnation so that we can experience and enjoy the drink that brings salvation satisfaction sufficiency and surplus in our lives thank god you are in for something good today there are three things we're looking at number one number one drawing water from the well of salvation drawing water from the well of salvation point number two defiling worship and the wages of sin defiling worship and the wages of sin number three discipling witnesses for the work of soul winning discipling witnesses for the work of soul winning we're coming back to john chapter four as we look at drawing water from the well of salvation we come to john chapter four and we're reading from verse 10 drawing water from the well of salvation chapter 4 of john verse 10 jesus answered and said unto her if thou knewest the gift of god that is if you had known that this is a day of opportunity for you if you had known that the gift of god is standing right before you if you had known if thou knewest the gift of god and who it is that says unto thee give me to drink thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given you what kind of water the living water that's the water of life and the woman says unto unto him sir there was nothing to draw with and the well is deep from whence then as thou this or that living water art thou greater than a father jacob she was a religious man and she referred to jacob remember abraham isaac and jacob she referred to jacob as her father in the in their religion which gave which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle jesus answered and said unto her we learn from jesus that we don't argue with religious people we don't argue with the prospects that we're witnessing to the people we're witnessing to we're not winning an argument we're winning a soul you'll win souls in jesus name if you go out to win an argument you lose the soul but if you leave argument alone and you concentrate on giving hell to the people enlightenment enlightenment to the people you are going to win souls in jesus name so jesus answered and said unto her whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again remember now that jesus is going beyond that water he's saying that whosoever tastes of the pleasures of the world 
of the things that the world has to offer whosoever drink it or this water the one you can get by yourself you can get you can go to the well and get that you can get to the river and get that you can get to the market and get that you can go to the hotel and get that you can go to street corners and get that you can get the pleasures of this life all by yourself and you run after this and run after this and run after that everything you can get by yourself it says you will thirst again there's no satisfaction there but in verse 14 whosoever you see this is available for whosoever it's available for me i said it's available for me you can be happy in life you can be fulfilled in life you can be satisfied in life and if what you've got is not satisfactory stop stop and say looks like i've been chasing the shadows looks like i've been running after the mirage of life and everything i've been running after they have not satisfied but now i know today i'm going to turn in the right direction to christ my life will have satisfaction you see there are many people if you look at our world today a lot of people are taking their lives they're committing suicide and you sometimes you read in the papers you have you know about the internet you know this one has taken his life again that one has taken um, her life again because they're not satisfied how i wish that they will turn to christ and thank god for those of us who are here i see life on your face the joy of salvation on your face you will not die prematurely and nothing will drive you to the suicide you know suicide table that to say i'll take my life you just in fact you're asking for even many more years to live life is so exciting in christ and life is so happy in christ that you're satisfied and you're happy and you say lord give me more years to serve you so that when i come to heaven i would have lived a full life here and then my reward will be full in jesus name i'm talking about you there happiness in your life joy in your life peace in your life in jesus name because whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, the Lord Jesus Christ said, shall be in him. It will remain in you. A well of water, it will never dry up springing up into everlasting life springing up into everlasting life once again once again you know religious people i wish we read more bible in all churches you see religious people they go to church and then they may pick one verse of the bible and then talk and talk and talk and tell stories and tell parables and they bring in some political ideas and all that make them laugh and entertain them the scriptures they could have read that will help the people in many of those religious places they are not read and this woman who appeared to be very religious and knows about the well knows about history but did not know about a particular kind of well let me show you isaiah chapter 12 I see here chapter 12 and I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. I see here chapter 12 reading from verses 2 and 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation look at look at that single verse salvation is mentioned twice but this woman even though religious she knew about salvation at all she didn't know about eternal life at all look at verse 3 therefore with joy what what tell me out aloud with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation you see that that's what jesus was talking about that is the water that i will give him will be in him a well of water springing out unto life eternal but you know what had happened in israel is they had exchanged the well of salvation 
for traditional religion that's why we're told in Je jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters what did jesus speak about he spoke about living water he said i'll give you living water the water of life but the children of Israel, they have forsaken God, the fountain of living waters, and they have hewed them out cisterns, containers, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Broken cisterns that can hold no water. And the people were still like that in the New Testament because, you know, the religion passed on from that time of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, and then to Malachi, then to the New Testament. And they were still carrying out those religious rites and rules that had no living water. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 17. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 17. I'm waiting for you to open your Bible. Are you opening your Bible? We are workers, and this is a training session, and God is going to transform your life. Second Peter, tell me your chapter. Tell me the verse. It says in verse 17, there are wells without water. You know, in the New Testament, their religion had dried up. Wells without water. No joy in their religion. No happiness in their religion. There was no excitement in their religion. And there was not something, there was not nothing in that made them to feel, I want to serve the Lord. It's all do's and don'ts, regulations and rules. If you do this, you die. If you don't do this, they are cast you out of the synagogue because they became wells without water, clouds that are carried about with a tempest. Who's, uh, who, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever and ever. But you see, Christ has brought salvation. And that's why he was, she was, he was telling that woman, drink of this water. You've been drinking and then you'll be coming and coming. You'll thirst again. But I'm going to give you water from the well of salvation. And you're going to have the joy and the strength and the ability to follow the Lord. Look at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other well of salvation except in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you are coming to the Lord. That's why you have come to the Lord. And you draw the water from the well of salvation because it says there is no there, neither is there salvation any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved now we talk about the well of salvation it's not just uh, the initial experience of salvation now it's full salvation as Jesus spoke about being born again, he spoke about water. When he spoke about sanctification, he spoke about water. When he spoke about the Holy Ghost baptism, he spoke about water. In fact, he's telling you that all the experiences you have in the Lord Jesus Christ is like you are getting deeper and deeper in the ocean of the love of God. You have experienced the love of God before you go deeper today. The joy of salvation before you go deeper today. And strength, strength, and vitality and refreshing. You've got it before. You are going to get more today in Jesus' name. Look at what he said about salvation being born again. John chapter 3. In John chapter 3. Here we're reading from verse 3. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god you see the water is connected it's the word of god the word of the gospel the word of his grace the word of truth and the word of faith and when you have that word of the gospel good news has come into your life 
the word of faith that leads you to believe because faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of god you hear that word of faith. say yes lord i believe i believe that jesus is my savior your life will turn around it's the word of truth and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free he spoke about salvation and he spoke about water look at ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 25 it says husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave themselves for it look at this now that she might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing tell me the washing of water by the word and he's talking about sanctification and it brings in the word now everything that comes from christ to us is uh, represented with that water and the water that i will give you i'm giving you salvation i'm giving you sanctification even the baptism of the holy ghost the water that i will keep give you you keep coming you keep coming it will abide in you it will become wells of water springing forth unto life eternal blessings will never stop in your life the goodness of God will never stop in your life. And anytime you think, I'm feeling dry, I'm feeling weak, I'm feeling weary, you go back to that source again. Before you come back, you're going to be revitalized again in Jesus' name. Even today, before you leave here today, new life will come. New refreshing will come. Look at verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. And he's talking about you. I have holy, holy people before me today. Should be holy and without blemish. Give God a good amen. Now, when we talk of uh, salvation, the water is there, the water of life, the water of truth, and the truth of the word of God, and the word of faith, all that is there. We talk of sanctification, the water is there again. Come now to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 37. John chapter 7, reading from verse 37. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Any man thirst, let him come unto me and do what? And drink. He that believeth on me, you see that now. He said, let him come unto me and drink. Lord, what do you mean by that drink? Believe. He that believeth on me, he explains himself. And we don't have to misunderstand. What does that mean? How do I drink? In what glass will I drink? In what cup will I drink? He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, shall flow somebody tell me there rivers of living water wells of water rivers of water because he believes salvation he has that water of life and in sanctification is cleansed and purged and purified with that same water of life now he's coming for the baptism of the holy ghost the lord is going to immerse him he's going to dip him so that outwardly is covered inwardly is saturated and sa satisfied it says but this verse 39 but this speak he of the spirit which they that believe that's the drinking that's the drinking that believe on him shall receive for the holy ghost was not yet given because that jesus was not yet glorified but now is glorified and that blessing is available for you sin does not satisfy only salvation brings lasting satisfaction you see sin leaves man empty dissatisfied sad sorrowful condemned defiled destroyed and damned but when he turns away from that which does not satisfy and he comes to god and he comes to christ then he has salvation and that salvation brings forgiveness brings peace of mind brings freedom 
brings satisfaction is a salvation that brings hope that salvation brings joy it brings life exciting life life that you know you just want to live and you are happy you are alive and it brings inner strength that salvation brings a purposeful living that salvation brings fellowship with God and it opens the way, opens the door to streams and rivers of continual freshness. And it's only in Christ we can find that full salvation. Only in Christ we can find that satisfaction. Only in Christ we can find that sanctification. It's only in Christ we have that baptism immersion in the spiritual power of the Holy Ghost. It's in Christ we have the abiding strength and the continual divine supply of the supernatural. There's so much available. You will not go empty-handed. And the Lord has provided so much and he says, Come. And then come and drink and come and believe new life is coming to you today Amen. point number two now we're coming to john chapter four john chapter four i'm reading from verse 16 john chapter four and we're reading from verse 16 in verse 16 it tells us in john chapter four jesus says unto her go call thy husband and come hither you know this woman had been going to their own temple to their own synagogue and nobody ever spoke about husband wife relationship nobody ever spoke about this is right and this is wrong nobody ever read the standard of the word of god to her on marriage and she just lived a life and it says the woman answered and said i have no husband and jesus said unto her thou hast well said i have no husband for thou hast had tell me five husbands and he whom thou now hast this number six is not thy husband in that thou saidst uh, thou truly you see she had uh, got one man she did marriage second man married third man married fourth man married fifth man married and she kept on going to her temple her synagogue uh, religious service uh, traditional worship and for her there's no big deal and for the priests and for the preachers that's no big deal and they kept coming and now she even got uh, kind of uh, tired of going to their local registry i want to marry again so she just packed that load and abandoned number five and went to a particular man and they were living together and no ceremony was even performed now jesus said you're spoken well because this is what you've been doing look at what she said the woman says unto him sir i perceive thou art a prophet that woman knew the definition and description of a prophet and she could tell from what you are telling me you know my life so much you are a prophet now i've been wanting to ask this question in our assembly in our traditional place of worship they don't give the uh, the opportunity for us to ask question now that i see that i'm talking to a prophet i'm going to ask you a question it says in verse 20 our fathers worshiped in this mountain and you say that in jerusalem is the place where men ought to to worship or to worship that's why we'll call this point number two defiling worship and the wages of sin she was still a sinner living her normal sinful life like everybody else all have sinned and come short of the glory of god but worship 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 continued but there was sin and then it says uh, jesus saith unto her the 21 woman believe me the hour cometh when he shall neither in this mountain nor yet at jerusalem worship the father ye worship ye know not what ye worship tell me say it aloud uh, what's the community of this of uh, this woman called Sama, samaria you understand let's look at them you worship 
ye know not what the people of samaria they were worshiping and worshiping every time and yet they didn't understand what worship really required we're looking at second at second uh, kings chapter 17 second kings chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 27 second kings chapter 17 verse 27 it says, Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let them teach them the manner of the God of the land. There is Samaria, you see it now. Then one of the priests whom they had carried uh, from, they carried from, Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear God. Taught them how they should fear God. But you see his partial teaching, verse 29, how be each, every nation, made gods of their own and put them in the houses of their high places, which they, tell me, Samaritans had made every nation in their own in their cities wherein they dwelt look at verse 33 they feared the lord and served their own gods that's the religion they practice that's the kind of worship uh, this man was uh, practicing that's what all the samaritans were doing they feared the lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they had carried whom they carried away from this look at this unto this day no change going to church no change easter no change christmas no change harvest time no change religion no change lenten season no change just religion just worship unto this day they do after their former manners they fear not the lord neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and the, or the commandments which the lord commanded the children of judah whom he named israel look at verse 41 so these nations feared the lord and search their graven images that's their worship they fear the lord they'll sing the song that contains the name of god god almighty god invisible god immortal they'll sing the name they, that, that contains uh, the name jesus jesus lord jesus savior jesus almighty and powerful the same yesterday today and forever they'll sing a song that contains the name the holy ghost but it says so these nations fear the lord and they serve their graving images both their children and the children's children as did their fathers so do they tell me the rest unto this day unto this day and that was the problem of that samaritan a woman that came to say to the lord jesus christ now uh, let's talk about some right worship here you people of jerusalem say that's the place to worship and we say this is the place to worship and we know we're right i will be doing it you know why we know we're right jacob our father gave us this world and then began to tell history but her life was still a life of dissatisfaction we're talking about defiling worship and uh, the wages of sin look at mark chapter 7 mark chapter 7 we're reading here from verse 6 mark chapter 7 reading from verse 6 the kind of worship that went on in the new testament by even the jewish people it says in mark chapter 7 verse 6 he answered and said unto them well as i said uh, 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 prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written these people honoreth me with their leaves but their heart is far from me look at verse 7 how be it tell me in vain they do what do they worship in vain do they worship in verse 7 and it says teaching for doctrine the commandments of men what did he say in vain do they worship 
Look at verse 20. And he said, That which is which cometh out of the man of out of out of man that defileth man for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornications murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceit lasciviousness and evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and they follow the man, but they were worshiping, defiling worship and the wages of sin. What was the result of their worship, defiling worship, when they were still defiled or sin? The same thing with this woman. Number one, dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction. We're looking at Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 23. In Proverbs chapter 23, you'll see that the practice of sin brings dissatisfaction. Proverbs chapter 23, and I'm reading here from verse 32. In verse 32, at the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Thou, ye, thou shalt uh, be as he that lies down in the midst of the, ma of the sea, and as he that lies upon the top of a mass. Look at verse 35. They have stricken me, shall thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When I shall awake, what will happen? I will seek it yet again. No satisfaction. I will seek it yet again. Number one, dissatisfaction. That's what sin brings. Number two, disqualification. Disqualification. Disqualified from the presence of the Lord. We're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. We're reading from the starting. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel says... I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord says that be far from me. I said before, you'll walk with me forever and your household will walk me forever. But now you are disqualified that be far from me. Disqualification. Number three, disengagement. Disengagement. You are engaged in the things of the Lord. And now when that defilement comes, then there is disqualification. For Samuel chapter 15. In First Samuel chapter 15, we're reading from verse 23. For Samuel chapter 15 verse 23 for rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because that was rejected the word of the lord he also has rejected thee from being king engaged before in serving the lord now there's disengagement number four there's disfellowship this fellowship somebody has been with the lord and now defilement comes in and say what is important i keep on worshiping the lord once i keep on worshiping i'm all right and yet sin has come in there's going to be this fellowship we're looking at numbers chapter 14 verse 12 numbers chapter 14 we're reading from verse 12 it says i will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them disinherit them they belong to me they'll not belong to me again and i will make of thee a greater nation and a mightier than thee exodus chapter 32 in exodus chapter 32 reading from verse 32 and verse 33 exodus chapter 32 verse 32 it says in uh, this uh, verse 32, Here is Moses uh, praying to the Lord, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, tell me what happens, 
him will I blot out of my book this fellowship. Number one, there's dissatisfaction. When sin goes on, defilement goes on, and then they say they are worshiping. Number two, there's disqualification. Number three, there's disengagement. Number four, there's disfellowship. Number five, disfavor. Disfavor. The favor of God is withdrawn from them. I say chapter chapter 59 i say yeah, chapter 59 reading from verse uh, reading from verse 1 i say yeah, chapter 59 we're reading from verse 1 behold the lord's hand is not shutting that it cannot save neither is ear heavy that you cannot hear but your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear that's disfavor number six that's displeasure displeasure when somebody you say i'm just worshiping god he's singing the song he's reading the whatever and he's preaching the word but he's uh, into defilement in in his life there is a sin what what happens there is divine displeasure we're looking at a psalm 7 psalm 7 we're reading from verse 11 psalm 7 reading from verse 11 it says in verse 11 it says god judges the righteous and god is and god is and angry with the wicked our often every day god is angry with the wicked every day look at first kings chapter 11 verse 9 first kings chapter 11 and we're reading here from verse 9 it says such the lord was angry with solomon the lord was angry with solomon look at the good things solomon had done before this time look at the fellowship the relationship that solomon had with god before this time but you understand the people that suddenly i'm going to do my duty i'm going to do my responsibility i'm going to worship and once i keep on worshiping everything is all right that's what some deceive the the worshipers what they do in those other places but there is going to be the displeasure of the lord on them because it says the lord was angry with solomon because his heart was turned from the lord god of israel which had appeared unto him twice number seven this disease this disease when somebody has you know gone back into sin and just carrying on the motion of uh, worship and is carrying on the motion of just uh, you know i praise the lord hallelujah and all that and a secret sin jeremiah chapter 5 verse 25 jeremiah chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 25 your iniquities have turned away these things and your sins have withholding good things from you it starts from dissatisfaction and then goes to disqualification and then there's disengagement and there's disfellowship there's disfavor there's displeasure and then there is disease that sickness i pray it will not come on you They'll keep you well, keep you safe and sound, and then keep you from sin and defilement in Jesus' name. Give a good amen to the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 30, Jeremiah chapter 30, I'm reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 30, reading from verse 12. For thus says the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound grievous there is none to plead thy cause and that thou mayest be bound up thou hast no healing medicine all thy lovers have forgotten thee they seek thee uh, they seek thee not for i have wounded thee it came from the lord and it says with the wound of an enemy with the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of thine iniquities because thy sins were increased then it says why Christ thou for thine affliction thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity because thy sins were increased I 
the Lord Almighty, I have done these things unto thee. So you can tell all these people, they are, they are defiled in their worship. And there are some people that say, well, I know that there's a good worship going on in that place. When you go there and you really worship God, you know, you feel like worship. Yes, I know they don't have holiness. I know they don't have righteousness. I know they are not living right. But you know, they know worship. They specialize in worship. My friend, that kind of worship, there's dissatisfaction there they come out of that place and you you cannot tell where they're going and then there is disqualification they disqualified if they die in that condition where do they go they go to hell and then there's disengagement the lord has disengaged from them there's disfellowship there's disfavor there's displeasure there's disease there's distress distress in the lives of those people that's why that woman kept on coming kept on coming there, there wasn't joy there wasn't satisfaction and there wasn't peace in her heart everything was distress and disaster too we're looking at uh, some 107 some 107 and i'm reading from verse uh, 17 some 107 verse 17 fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities afflicted their soul abhorreth all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. They have distress. They, they have so much despair and so much distress because, you know, a guilty heart will give somebody depression and will give somebody distress. But when you come to the Lord, all that will vanish away. What are the consequences of defiling worship? Number one, tell me. I said number one, the consequences of defiling worship, number one, dissatisfaction, number two, disqualification, number three, disengagement, number four, disfellowship, number five, disfavor, number six, displeasure, number seven, disease, number eight, distress, number nine, disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. You see, that many people, they go about, you can see it on their faces, they're disappointed in life. They say, I pray and God does not answer my prayer. They say, I'm asking for this and God never does it. I get the money and then the money just uh, goes away. I get some good things, but the good things, they vanish away. And I'm asking for this, there's no joy, there's nothing, and yet I'm serving the Lord. You see, they are defiling worship and what is going to follow is good going to be disappointment. I say, I pray God will deliver you from that in Jesus name. Look at Job chapter 5 and verse 12. Job chapter 5 verse 12. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise that is they have a goal they have a kind of a dream they have a kind of ideal they have a kind of thing they want to have i want to do this i want to perform that it says so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise not only that now number 10 there's dishonor dishonor we're looking at uh, uh, proverbs chapter 6 proverbs chapter 6 there's dishonor although they say that you know they worship but it's defiling worship and so it gives them dishonor proverbs chapter 6 we're reading from verse uh, chapter 6 reading from verse 32 verse 32 but who so committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding he that doeth he destroys his own soul he wonder and uh, what's the next word dishonor shall he get and his reproach shall not be wiped away his reproach shall not be wiped away there is dishonor eventually there is destruction number 11 there's destruction we're looking at romans chapter romans chapter 3 romans chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 16 romans chapter 3 Reading from verse 16, it says destruction and misery are in their ways. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Finally, damnation, damnation, damnation. I pray this will not be your Lord. I said this will not be your Lord. You will not worship God in vain. Say I will not worship God in vain. 
the favor of the lord will be upon your life and the goodness of the lord will be upon your life the overflowing well of salvation will be springing up in you unto life everlasting every time in jesus name but you know all these people worship 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 and then the life is defiled their thoughts are defiled their mind defiled and their family defiled and you know they're covering a lot of dirty dirty things uh, you know with the garment of religion damnation eventually look at uh, uh, matthew chapter 23 matthew chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 33 matthew chapter 23 verse 33 it says uh, ye serpents and uh, Jesus generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell how can they escape the damnation of hell that's why the lord is raising you up to go and tell them to go and preach to them and to go and bring them into the saving knowledge of the lord and as you talk to them they're going to be saved this woman that we're talking about come back to come back to john chapter 4 this woman received the message this woman received that uh, gospel and the good news she was saved her sins were forgiven and life came to her and she was so happy now that she was going to serve the lord the rest of her life like you are going to serve the lord the rest of your life a new change had come and that change had transformed her life completely look at the change we are coming to point number three now discipling witnesses for the work of soul winning discipling witnesses for the work of soul winning we're coming to john chapter 4 verse 28 john chapter 4 verse 28 the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and says to the men come see a man which told me all things that ever i did is not this the christ is she said i've discovered christ i found him and then the well of salvation that he brought i've got it and then he invited them she became a soul winner and it says in verse 30 then they went out of the city and they came unto him she had come unto him she had believed on him now she brought all these people and they came to believe on him i'm talking about your life now she was so excited you'll be excited she was so happy i found him you'll be happy you found him in jesus name what transformed this woman to a disciple and to a winner of souls how is it very quickly that she left the water pause left everything and then went out number one the example of the savior the example of the savior look at the savior weary and tired and hungry and the disciples went to buy something that he would eat and then this woman came and jesus forgot himself and now gave this woman the opportunity of getting saved that he is the example of the savior jesus said you call me lord and master so you say well i have given you an example that you should follow what the example i've given unto you number two is the exhortation of scripture exhortation of scripture how do you make disciples of people how do you turn people who were seen us before you turn them to converts in christ and then you turn them to effective practical excited happy soul winners the exhortation of scripture we're told in james chapter 2 verse 8 as the scripture has said love your neighbor as yourself she said if i have discovered this and nobody ever told me and now i have this joy i love the people as myself according to the scriptures that's why she went out and she told the people number one is the example of the savior number three is the exhortation of scripture number three is the experience of salvation experience of salvation that's exactly what jesus said if you drink of this water you'll thirst again but when you drink of the water i will give you it will be in you a well of living waters it will be going forth and going forth unto life everlasting a renewal has come to her a refreshing has come to her a new life has come to her she had the experience of salvation 
number four this one she might not have got but this available for you and for me is the expression of sanctification expression of sanctification you see when we're sanctified it makes us to have the mind of christ it makes us to have the nature of christ and we we'll want to go out and tell other people i can see desire you to tell other people I said I see the desire you to tell other people. It's, a, it's part of the expression of a sanctification. Look at this. Look at this. John chapter 17. John chapter 17 verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And after that sanctification as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. That's you. I said that's you number one is the example of the savior number two is the exhortation of scripture number three is the experience of salvation number four is the expression of sanctification number five the expulsion of self the expulsion of self he, she drove self out you know the one that will say that's my porch that's my jog and then you tell me to give you a cup of water what are you giving me that I'm going to give you a cup of water I will say to a Jew and you are telling me a Samaritan to give you water she forgot all that self had been totally expelled so she left her water pot and said you can take all the water in the well because now I have something that is greater than you can have my job too you can have my pot too she expels self you know when we're full of self we don't want to work for God we don't want to serve God we're asking what am I going to have what am I going to receive what are they going to do for me what are they going to give me but now when self is expelled I see somebody there self is expelled self will not dominate self will not rule over your life expulsion of self she left everything and went to the city and said come see a man that uh, told me everything that i did it's not this the christ number six she didn't have this one i'm going to talk about now but we can have it in jesus name the expectation of the spirit expectation of the spirit tarry in jerusalem until ye be in deal with power from on high and they shall receive power somebody there today ye shall receive tell me out aloud he shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come unto you and he shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria to the uttermost part of the earth that holy ghost power will come upon your life number seven is the extension of service you see jesus christ was there and jesus had served her had given her the word of salvation and she said i'm going to be an ex ex extension of the service of the lord jesus christ the extension of service and she left everything there and then ran into the town and said this is somebody who has told me everything i ever did is this not the christ and then they came to the lord you bring many people to the lord in jesus name number eight is the examination of self you need to examine yourself where do you stand look at this woman she got salvation and she got that well of water inside her and now she went out immediately she didn't even have the commandment of jesus just the example of jesus and she didn't have the encouragement of the other disciples just the well of water just a joy of salvation that drove her and compelled her to go and tell other people and you have got this salvation for how many years now examine yourself whether you be in the faith and as you examine yourself i pray that you will do what needs to be done in jesus name somebody there give me a good amen, amen. look at look at second look at second corinthians chapter 13 second corinthians chapter 13 i'm reading here from verse 5 it says examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith or prove your own selves don't you know you know you're not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except he be reprobate. I am not a reprobate. I'm a renewed child of God. Revived child of God. Refreshed child of God. And I'm going to go out and tell all the people. 
examine yourself number nine is the exposition of scripture exposition of scripture and you see that's what we do that's why we go from verse to verse and we go from the old testament to the new testament and then we show that this is the word of god this is the way walk ye therein and i pray that as you discover the exposition of scripture and the explanation of scripture and then it takes effect and takes root inside your heart I pray you'll be obedient in Jesus name I will be obedient I said I will be obedient look at Mark chapter 4 Mark chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 34 Mark chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 34 it says but without a parable speaking not unto them and when they were alone he expounded all things to his disciples that's why they became so winners that's why they went out and they went to tell other people and that's why with the exposition of scripture you're about today that's why the love of god is now increasing in your heart and the joy of salvation is now stirring you up saying go and tell somebody go and tell somebody somebody there will rise up and tell another one exposition of scripture we're looking at luke chapter 24 and verse 27 luke chapter 24 and i'm reading here from verse 27 luke chapter 24 reading from verse 27 and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them all the scriptures all the scriptures all the scriptures the things concerning himself the things concerning himself now the lord has expanded to us what the water of life means and what it means to drink of that water of life and what it means to be filled and saturated and satisfied with that water of life it is now time to go out and go and reach out to other people in the house fellowship tomorrow you reach out to them tonight you are going to invite people to the service tomorrow and then your local church will bring a those invitees and those newcomers and then we'll see you having joy and then you will lead by the grace of god those people you lead them to the lord in jesus name great will be their joy and great will be your own joy look at uh, revelation chapter 21 revelation chapter 21 here we're reading from verse 6 revelation chapter 21 verse 6 and he said unto me it is done it is done it is accomplished it says i'm alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely satisfaction free all your supply free spiritual strength free the grace of god free life in christ free excitement free power free i will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life tell me tell me freely chapter 22 revelation 22 reading from verse 17 and the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will you see in the house tonight whosoever will i said is she in the house tonight whosoever whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely everything is available for you rise up and demand from the lord the water of life the river of life the salvation the sanctification the holy ghost baptism there is power there's joy there is life there's excitement there is strength everything you need everything you'll ever need everything is available now unto god that is able to do exceeding abundantly above whatever we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us his name is jesus call him through that name call him through that name and then they will give you all that you demand for let's make sure that the defilement of religion is gone and now you come to the lord and what jesus provided at calvary is all available for you fullness of joy fullness of life available for everyone today